Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, while I was at CES, I was able to stop by the Fraunhofer booth and speak to Robert Blight about AAC and MPEG-H. So I'm going to be publishing two videos. The first one is about AAC, HEAAC and XHEAAC. Then the next video I'm going to publish is about MPEG-H. So if you want to find out more about AAC, please... Oh! Two things before we get there. The first is I don't talk to the front of the people at all about patents or licensing. This is just a look at the technology itself. And secondly, when I set up the camera, I made a bit of a mistake and it kind of cuts off a bit of the top of my head. You'll see that in the video. Don't worry, listen to what Robert has to say because it's really, really interesting. So without further ado, let Robert explain. I've come to the Fraunhofer stand. Of course, Fraunhofer are famous for MP3 and AAC, and I have the pleasure of talking to Robert Blight, who's going to tell us a bit about their new codex and also about MPEG-H. Robert, thank you for spending the time to talk to me today. Thank you, Gary. So uh, we're going to show two things here at the Fraunhofer booth for your channel. The first is what we call XHEAAC, which is an extended version of AAC. You know, AAC began around the time the iPod was launched, uh, turn of the century, and it's a very good codec in its original form, as long as you have the bit rate to, uh, to carry the AAC signal. Typical yeah. bit rate is perhaps 128 kilobits per second for a stereo channel. Yeah. And uh, that codec has served the music industry uh, reasonably well uh, during the, uh, the first decade of the century. And uh, we began to see requirements for perhaps a codec that would work at lower bit rates mm -hmm. so that you could, uh, for example, uh, stream music uh, over mobile networks uh, while you're uh, out uh, on foot or in a car or some other environment where you only have the mobile connection. Yeah. And we know that mobile bandwidths tend to fluctuate depending on network conditions. So. The second generation of AAC was HEAAC. Oh, okay, right. And HEAAC uh, took, took advantage of uh, a little uh, fact. Uh, when, we, when we actually do the audio coding of a, uh, an audio program, we're doing uh, time to frequency transforms in order to operate in the frequency domain. Um, and uh, time to frequency transforms are linear in frequency. Okay. So in other words, when we take in a, a, t a time signal, we perform a, uh, a Fourier or similar transform to transform it into frequencies, there are, there are just as many frequency lines, as we call them, between zero and 10,000 hertz. Completely linear, yeah as there is between 10,000 and 20,000 hertz. Oh, okay, right. So what that means is uh, we, we humans tend to listen to uh, the audio spectrum on a logarithmic basis. Um, and I'm simplifying things a bit, but uh, in general, you know, we listen on an octave basis. Uh, so all those spectral lines between between 10 and 20 kilohertz are really perhaps more resolution than we need. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we took advantage of that in HEAAC by uh, not sending that top octave of information, and we make a, we make sort of a copy based on the octave below, right. roughly speaking. Uh, don't tell me the technical accuracy on all of these <laughs> yeah, yeah. items, but uh, effectively we take the octave below and we send some parametric information about how to maybe tweak, tweak it a little it to bit. Be better. Right, yeah. Um, because usually the harmonics at those high frequencies are related to a large degree in both their harmonic structure and the time structure of them, and so uh, we are able to basically lop off that top octave, and that's half of that linear frequency spectrum information. Yeah. Uh, it's maybe denigrating the technology, but in, in loose in loose terms, that lets us get to half the bit rate. Uh, maybe not exactly no, no. the same quality, yeah. but it lets us get a good quality at half the bit rate. Yeah. So typically we use HEAAC at 
64 kilobits and below. Right. And and that was very helpful to uh, operators who wanted to stream music over mobile networks. Then we had to say, what could we do for uh, operators who are using satellite networks, for example, where they don't even have the mobile bandwidths because they're trying to fit so many channels into a limited mm. one megahertz satellite transponder. Yeah. And in those cases, we had a follow-on generation of technology, which is called HEAC V2. Okay. And what, what that offers is, instead of sending two stereo channels, we actually only send a mono channel. Right. And that allows us to cut the bit rate in half, half again, again, basically. Right. <laughs> and again, this is loose terms. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't take these bit rates as accurate. But in loose, a loose analogy, uh, we're only sending one channel, so roughly half the, the, the bit rate. And so how do we get the stereo back? Yeah. We use uh, spatial parametric coding to do that. And uh, so we analyze the stereo image, and uh, we do this on a frequency band by frequency band basis, and we say, well, in this frequency band, the energy's really over here to the left, or over here to the right, or it's in the middle. And, and here I am grossly, grossly simplifying the matter. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. basically we are sending, in a sense, for every frequency band, and the signal we're sending sort of a pan pot that you turn one way or the yeah, other, yeah. and that's varying for every audio frame that we send out. And this lets us take basically only code a mono signal. Right. So we're getting more efficiencies. Right. That takes us up to the current technology, <laughs> which is XHEAC. A and there uh, we're doing uh, maybe not such a quantum increase in performance by the techniques I've described before, yeah. we're making other improvements. Okay. And one of those improvements is speech quality. Okay, yeah. So as you go down in bit rate with a traditional general perceptual audio coder, which the AAC family is, um, you begin to have problems with raspiness on speech. Speech doesn't sound natural uh, at a bit rate where music would be okay. Mm -hmm. And you often hear this on radio, you know, the music sounds okay, but the announcer comes on and if it's a low bit rate, you know, he does a little little distortion, a little raspiness in his voice. We solved that problem because the, the again, um, perhaps I'm using some sales language here, <laughs> but you can think of it as the, the buzzword here at the CES show, artificial AI, intelligence. AI, right, yeah, <laughs> so you okay. use AI. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> regrettably, it's not real, uh, you know, multi-layer <laughs> artificial intelligence, but we are doing uh, an adaptive coding, okay. and we actually have elements of two audio codecs inside HEAC. We have uh, the traditional AAC codec for music, and we have a separate speech coder Right. that's intended specifically for speech. and. The overall uh, audio system is switching between those uh, to pick the best codec automatically. So, so as the frames are coming along, it could be encoded in one or the other, or the two, and then it just decodes them uh, appropriately. Correct. Okay. And this can they overlap at all? Not real. Not really. Okay. But this allows us to uh, go even lower in bit rate and still maintain a good speech quality. Yep. Yep. So that's one improvement that we've made. Um, also, there are some system improvements in XHEAC. One of them is loudness. You know, today with uh, the the older members of the AAC family, um, basically every content source that you get can have a different loudness to it because some some of it may be music that's been mastered for a very high level, and and so it has no dynamics in the audio and it's going to blast you out. Then you might turn to a channel such as yours where you've not highly compressed the audio and so perhaps it's 15 dB less loudness. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with the older AAC technologies, uh, that loudness control, although it's there in some of the more popular platforms like uh, 
Android and iOS. It's not universal. Right. With uh, XHEAC, there is mandatory universal loudness control. Okay. So that when you play back the content, um, each content item will be presented at a uniform loudness. Okay. You can still have loudness variations, yep. you know, for artistic effect yeah, in yeah. the program. Your symphony can start out soft <laughs> and build a crescendo, but uh, between items, it won't be the case where you've cranked the volume up to listen to your channel, yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden Sorry. now you play pop music and it's <laughs> going to blast your ears all out. All right, okay. So that's another feature. Excellent. The the third thing that we have to think about is when we first started AAC people were, were encoding at discrete bit rates. Right. You know, you would buy your music uh, at 128 kilobits, or if you wanted the audiophile version, perhaps at 256 kilobit stereo, and uh, that's what you got. Yep. Well, we're in the internet world today, and your music is streamed, and the bit rates ideally would be adjusted to match the bandwidth available. Right. You don't want it to stream at too high a rate where you would have stuttering yep. because there's momentary... Uh, the network can't cope with the latency, yeah. Yes. Uh, and on the other hand, you don't want to take in too low a bandwidth yep. because uh, you might miss the quality. See, if yep. you're in a quiet situation, yep. you want to hear a good quality. XHEAC can switch on the fly during a song the bandwidth the bandwidth between 12 kilobits and 500 kilobits wow. for stereo that is brilliant so uh, this allows a uh, streaming service provider to give you the best quality if, if the network bandwidth is there can, can with, that is brilliant i like that idea that's fantastic and uh, i guess we're very pleased to announce that XHEAC is built into Android. Yep, so I so, just saw that here, it says mandatory in, in all Android 9 devices. Correct. So that's gonna get into the hands of a lot of people very, very quickly. It is. That's really great. Okay, and there we have it, a great explanation of how the AAC codec has developed over the last decade or so. So as I mentioned earlier, the next video will be about MPEG-H also with Robert from Fraunhofer. Okay, that's it, I'll see you in the next one.